Hey friendly, just want to hear something cool? My girls and I are glamping in the boreal forest. Stick around, it's going to be fun. Well, we're glamping all right. That's the tent we arrived at. And I will say one thing, I'm bloody glad that we did. Because if we'd done this my way, we still would have been setting up our tent when this storm hit on Thursday night. <laughs> so, glamping it is. Today is the first day we're Saturday morning and it's the first day we're allowed to have a fire because the entire national park was extremely dry because of a lack of rain. And then it finally rained, we were like, yay, but then it was too windy to have a fire. Late last night, the wardens came around and said that we could have a fire. So this morning, we're gonna celebrate by having a fire. And then I'm gonna cook some, I don't know, eggs and bake, bacon and eggs in the comment section below. Do you say eggs and bacon or bacon and eggs? Because I've always said bacon and eggs, but I know a lot of people who say that's wrong and I think they're wrong. So what do you guys think? Let's make a fire. So look. The days, that's a terrible framing. Hold on a sec. So the days of you just being able to pick up wood wherever you want in a national park are long gone. These days what you have to do is buy it in bags. Oh, weird shadowing. Whatever, it's an authentic woods experience here, okay? Um, so what you have to do now is spend like $7.50 for a bag of wood at the, the park. Um, I have no idea what the center is called in English. So anyway, so we, we got a couple of those. Um, they're great for if you're going to start a fire with like that squeezy stuff or whatever, but if you're going to start with tinder and all that, it's not so great. So I'm going to chop some of it into smaller kindling size pieces. And I brought some tinder from home because I, I was pretty sure that was going to be the case. Man, I look like I've painted my face camo. Whatever, let's get to work. Okay, I've put a towel down because I think we're going to go into town to go to the zoo later. And I don't think my family wants to be seen with me with dirt all over my knees. Here's a relatively flat piece of wood that I'm going to use as a chopping block. Oh, I'm, I don't know about that. I don't know about that, guys. No, okay, I'm just gonna have to be real careful. Yeah, no, I need a chopping block. Okay, I flattened off the bottom of this one. It's not perfect but Ugh. okay if this first chop doesn't go as I want it to then I'll just I'll figure something else out actually that was pretty good but I just didn't have the I didn't have the, the chutzpah going to really pound it through. I should try to do is one of these smaller ones. Oh, look at all that beautiful birch bark. Stuff is fire lighters delight, man. Gonna save some of that up. No, oh, I'm really worried about this. Let's see. Actually, pretty good. Let's just go to batoning so that I can maintain a little control here. Okay, all right, I'm feeling a bit better about this. That's still not perfect, but it'll do. That'll do.
Oh. My hands are a little cold here, so. Let's try a slightly heavier, but easier on the hands piece here. Oh no! Phew, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> Hard on the back here, guys. It's because there's there's a knot right there, so it's giving me a hard time here. Ah, oh, so much. Now, I may not be allowed to just chop up any wood I find standing dead or otherwise around here, but they never said anything about these beautiful dry balsam fir branches. So I'm gonna take a few, okay? This one's dead. No, it's not. It's important to just take the dry stuff because even though down here nothing's happening, like, I may be wrong about this, guys, and if I am, somebody let me know, but like that was beautiful you know the old rule of thumb right if it bends before snapping air on the safe side i do that even when i'm taking these dead oh that one's clearly yeah i do that even when i'm taking these low branches because i'm never really sure i'm not an expert at this i didn't go to school for forestry or anything but like this snaps fine but if I'm trying to take one off and it sort of it bends I'll like that one's bending a lot so I'm just gonna leave it there it would make really nice tinder but you know don't trip into the camera oh. okay right here right into the middle of it mm, the shiny part Dad. jab it right into the middle We should add some char cloth to this. Yeah. I like char cloth. Get right onto the char cloth. Oh my whoa. god. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. It's okay, again? At least it was a nice bark. Again? Oh wait, wait, you know what? Let me just, there, okay. Why do you want to do that? Right into that? the middle. Because sometimes it helps it catch. Was that, was that it? No, no. again. There it is, there it is, there it is. You got it, you got it. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Roll a little bit. Yeah, okay. Yay! That was a very good job, Squirt. Even though my hands are hurting. Yeah, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Pain is good. It teaches you that you're alive. It's still burning. So you need to leave the time. Oh yeah, right there, right there. Oh, did we miss it? Did we miss it? Bring this oh, over. Oh, Daddy, look! Shoot, it's okay, it's okay. Small, small pieces of wood. Small piece of wood. I had a couple of baggies around here with like some wood shavings. Perfect. Sorry, I did them. It's okay. Don't worry about it. We're lit. That's all we care about. Put them on. Put them on right now, please. Right now. I have no idea if, if my framing is any good. Your camera videoing. Yeah, it is. Eh? Yeah. Now these guys. They'll get burned. Yep. Yeah, everything is gonna be good. All right. Mommy. Oh, is that Mama? Get your pizza. Okay. Mama. 
Or maybe the wind blowed it to help See that us. small piece over there? Those, those little, uh, littler, jeez, I'm talking like you. Those smaller pieces, anything around that size left, we'll use it. Bring it over. No. Put it carefully, though. Exactly it's got to go in. Oh, man. Yeah, well, you know. Damn. Damn. It's okay. You can do it, man. Okay. Put it. Aww. I'm crazy cuckoo. What? What kind of talk is that? It's my own talk, man. Uh, I hope it's not too windy, guys. I just wanted to say, um, in that fire before we started, which I forgot to film, there was some, uh, the remains of some birch bark. So whoever was in this campsite before us knew how to start a fire with birch bark. Come here, bunny. So yeah, in the fire, there was some burned birch bark, which tells me that the people who were here before know how to start a fire with birch bark. But, they didn't know not to rip the damn bark off a living tree. There is a dead tree lying, like a big one, like 40 meters from here. Take that as a lesson, guys. If you don't want to piss off the bushcrafter who may be here right after you, don't be adult, okay? Okay. Hello, people. I'm in my own fire. A little shout out to Zed Outdoors and Mr. Mark All Years Life on Instagram for introducing me to this tea can. I love it greatly. I use it all the time and it's thanks to you lovely boys. Thanks a lot guys. What do you mean we need a little rock? I want to throw one in to see if it's pretty. Man, look at this strata. Look at that. Man, at some point, look over there too. Look at that. At some point, hold on. I don't know if I'm in focus here. Let me. Get my screen out. Yeah. At some point, something elephantine over a long, long time tipped this landscape on its side, putting all these strata that are usually this way, vertical. Crazy. Actually, I know exactly what it was. Um, this entire fjord was carved out by the last ice age, whenever that was. I don't quite remember my dates, because, you know, I'm not trained in this stuff, but he carved out the fjord, but also the weight of all that ice pushed down on, on the surrounding landscape, as happens. And when the ice age ended and the ice evaporated, not only did it leave behind this huge fjord, but it left behind a very depressed landscape which rebounded and that has to be in my opinion what turned some stuff on its side it's the only thing i can think of i mean granted this is all mountain ranges so maybe it's just the the natural formation of mountains you know as mountains get pushed up they turn the strata sort of increasingly sideways as the mountains get pushed up making char cloth and i
One thing I do want to say about this morning's fire, um, the girls did that by themselves, without me. They did it without matches, they did it proper. I saw Camille coming in and putting away her, her, her fire kit. And so, good job to my girls. It's our last night here. Um, for supper, making some stew. Well, I was making stew and then it ended up being a team effort, <laughs> which is fine by me. It's, you know, what we never, we never really talk about how good it is to cook with someone rather than cooking for someone. Um, but anyways, that's neither here nor there. Tonight, we're having stew. Okay, so here's the situation. You guys have seen me carry this around, right? This is a Trangia. It, technically, it's a mess kit, I think. And this, which is the, the fire kit that I, I won from Tank Tracks, still very grateful for. And then there's this little bag for her stuff. What I got here is her kit is right here with this tiny Altoids thing. This steel is no good. So I'm going to give her this steel from the tank tracks giveaway. Here's her little piece of flint. Let's see if we can get something to happen on screen. Are you guys seeing this? Lots of sparks, it's good. It's a good steel. Piece of fat wood. Here's the scraper that I gave her with the ferro rod that I made her. Here's a tin of char cloth. This is Camille's um, jute rope. I think she's out of the loose jute. No, nope, there's still just a bit there. So that goes in there. Her ferro rod goes in there. Her new fire steel goes in there. Look at that piece of flint. Beautiful. And that's sort of just like to, to make her kit complete. Those of you who watched Joe Robinette's recent series, the 10 items, 10 days thing, will remember him saying in uh, was it the first or second episode, how he was saying, you know, I'm up here in the boreal. Oh, and did I mention that I'm in the boreal forest? By the way, I'm in the boreal forest. It's because this is not just forest. The boreal is something completely different. It's, it's huge. Right, it reaches from Labrador across Quebec, Ontario, blah blah blah, right to, you know, right across Canada, into um, Alaska, wraps around, across Russia, into Scandinavia, you know, like Finland, Norway, the magical kingdom of Sweden, and then back. Okay, it's huge. Um, those who talk about, you know, the Amazon as being the lungs of the planet are only telling half the story. The boreal is ginormous, and it is absolutely a part of that, a part of that process. No boreal, no oxygen, essentially. And it's 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 an exciting forest. It smells a, a way that I'm not used to down near Montreal. It's not boreal, but you know, even down there, people are talking about you know boreal. There's a beer called Boreal, and all that. There's a um, um, a printing press, you know, that's called that's named after the boreal, but. There's no boreal down there. But Quebec's cultural psyche, I guess, is so steeped in the boreal myth that even down there we, we like to, you know, <laughs> to claim it. But it's nothing like this down there. This is a mix of flora and fauna that's like nowhere else in North America. There's a lot of fabulous animals here. You got lynxes, you got cougars, you know, you, know, you got white-tailed deer, but you got white-tails everywhere. But you've also got moose elk caribou elk yeah you got elk caribou something that looks like a reindeer we saw one recently and it was just spectacular you've got black bears you know and and where we are it's the uh, the Saguenay the fjord which is epically large it's 165 kilometers long and only the last 65 kilometers of it up the river isn't salt water. It's, it's an estuary of the St. Lawrence. Well, it's in the estuary of the St. Lawrence. It branches off and it's salt water for 100 kilometers. It's an epic place. 
the boreal forest. It's a magical place. It's powerful. It's exciting to be here. I'm sorry that we have to go back home. <laughs> this wouldn't be Rain Dance Bushcraft without... Okay, s'mores. But also beer. Tonight's beer. What? You like it? Mm-hmm. By the way, this is my first time making s'mores. I had never made s'mores before. Now I have. Great! And I feel that that's made me a better person. So tonight's beer is La Schwab is the name of the brewery. And it's an Ambre Amaire. Beer on Lees. In English, it's called an American Pale Ale. 5% alcohol, so it's pretty standard. And it's 500 milliliters. And it's local to the Saguenay. It, in fact, it's local to Saint Felicien, which is on Lac Saint Jean here in the beautiful boreal forest. And it's a very fine drink. Mm. And those are very fine s'mores. So, as I, or I guess we always say, if you like what we're doing, then please get the conversation started down below. This week's question is, when you're out in the bush, <clears throat> how do you make your coffee or tea or, or, hot, or hot chocolate? chocolate? Do you do it over the fire or do you do it on a gas stove? Whatever it is, let me know, let us know down below. Uh, aside from that, please share the video. It helps us more than you think, especially now that YouTube is so crazy. Um, if you're not subscribed, then please subscribe. If you are subscribed, then hit that little bell and leave us a smiley thumb. If you don't like what we're doing, leave us a frowny thumb. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>